Hey, good afternoon. It's Sabine. So we have reached the day of Tuval, and the day is so amazingly rich with promise. I'm going to go over the pointers uh, briefly because I have found two uh, new reasons, at least new for me, why this day is so rich prophetically. This video is entitled The Tuba of Summer Door, The Final Lowly Temple Offerings, and the Balm of Gilead. So when we started out speaking about Tuba of, we covered a lot of ground already. And of course, the fields being white with the grain and the grapes being ready and especially the Shiloh maidens dancing in the vineyard, and the restoration of the tribe of Benjamin, the sons of the right hand. So keep the name Benjamin in mind, because it's going to come into play when we cover these two new uh, findings. So the 15th of Av, I'm going to go over all the reasons why this is such a rich day. The 15th of Av, by the way, on the Israel state calendar is today. But on the corrected Torah calendar, with the delayed new moon sighting uh, in mind, it is this Sunday. So we're actually looking at the entire weekend. So the state calendar of Israel is completely dislodged from all the precepts in Leviticus 23. And uh, But nonetheless, as I explained in the previous video, this may... Uh, still hold up prophetically because this is the day in Israel if they go by their own calendar, which is most renowned for marriages. So the 15th of Av in Jewish history, the forgiveness regarding the sin of not believing the spies, the Shiloh maiden snatch, the end of the year for planting, and the ban on intertribal marriage being lifted. And then in the part of the day of the acts there is a beautiful very uh small segment that i didn't cover but it's it's just amazing so we're going to go over all these elements like quickly and you can pick up the larger overview with all the links in the article and as always that is linked in the description box so the celebration of tuba of is because the older generation no longer died and the younger generation by the time of Tubi off because they continued their um, sleeping in the graves until the full moon of Av, which is tonight um, they knew at long last that they were freed from the curse of the grave coming out of the graves like a foreshadowing of the dead in Christ rising first it is also the day according to the uh, rabbinical accounts and we always have to um, how do you say that uh, be a little bit thoughtful when it comes to sor sources only being uh, recorded in the uh, rabbinical writings because it's not scriptural but still i'm going to report it elijah went to heaven one day after the shabbat nahamu the sabbath of consolation so the Constellation Sabbath is the Sabbath after the 9th of Av. That Sabbath starts tonight. And that is the Sabbath after the uh, 9th of Av, which uh, has already preceded us. So Elijah went to heaven at the time uh, on the uh, 10th of Av, because at the time when he died, that was the, uh, the first day after that Sabbath this year. The day after that Sabbath lands uh, on Tuba Av, on the corrected Torah calendar. So it lands on Sunday. So in Elijah's day, the first day after the Sabbath of Constellation was Av 10. This year it is Tuba Av on the corrected Torah calendar this Sunday. Av 15, the snatch of the maidens in Shiloh, the dancing in the vineyards, Numbers 21.21. 21. So the Hakafot procession of the bride around the groom dur during a Jewish wedding is also reflected in the heavens with the moon uh, passing the sun seven times. The 15th day of the month, the tribe of Benjamin being restored 
It is also the day that the ban on intertribal marriage was lifted, and that is connected to Ruth and Boaz, but also to the daughters of Salafidat, and those were awarded a portion of the inheritance in Israel, but they uh, couldn't intermarry at the time because then the inheritance would be lost to that tribe. So you can read more about that over here in the research notes. Jeroboam's roadblocks were removed. So that is a type of the Antichrist um, causing us to not be able to go back to the heavenly Jerusalem. So at the time, he blocked the people uh, to uh, make the thrice yearly, yearly pilgrimages to the holy temple in Jerusalem. And Hosea ben, uh, ben uh, Elah, the last king of the northern kingdom, removed those obstacles. It's the last trumpet of the year, and the a uh, picture of the entire feast of Tuviav is that of reintegration of a people group formally set apart. And then after trial and tribulation, sometimes judgment, they were reintegrated into the tribes, provided they repented and turned, became obedient, and stepped out by faith. In other words, they became overcomers in Christ. And we see that same account in the story of Joseph when both he was reintegrated with his brothers then with his father but they themselves were also reintegrated after going through their own wilderness trials the month of the father making arrangements for a wedding the desire of ages to come the oil scarcity being highest in the, in the month of Av, just prior to the harvesting and pressing of the new oil, watchmen building tabernacles in the vineyard to guard and shelter the grape harvest. It's a wedding picture because the bride is reflected in the first ripe grains, but, uh, grapes, but also in the summer wheat. We covered that before. The central blood, uh, central bullseye blood moon of 2018 was over Jerusalem on their Tuba Av, on the state calendar. And remember that the first Bethlehem star, the conjunction of Jupiter and Venus in 3 BC was also on August the 12th. The sages, uh, speaking of the Messiah, revealing himself to the people on Tuba Av according to their Talmudic sources, and they distort that by sending out these um, messages of a false or a red wedding, a false wedding of the people to their Messiah. So we have this contrast between the Lord's white wedding with the provided linens. We're supposed to be keeping both spotless and, and clean, but the bride also used the time in between the betrothal and the wedding to adorn the garment. And then on the other side, the red wedding. So the association, the um, connection with death, with which results in bloodshed because they reject the blood atonement of the Lord or they don't appropriate the blood atonement. And therefore they have to um, be disciplined, suffer, and if they have to stay longer during the course of the tribulation, lose their life. The design of the Hebrew calendar is um, dislodged from the biblical principles. So, but the Lord is all sovereign. So he, our departure is also going to speak to them as a sign. And we covered that in the heavens, there's a connection to the sign of Jonah because our departure will be followed by spiritual darkness, perhaps physical darkness also. The conjunction of the moon and Jupiter takes place in Cetus the Sea Monster, pointing to the account of Jonah. And we know that the sun has just entered into the constellation Leo, the sickle of the harvest, composed of its head and the chest stars. Venus the Beloved has just entered the resting place in the constellation Cancer. And the moon is, of course, uh, in, its, in her full face. She is unveiled tonight. 
the um, tuba of summer door um, that is also an important marker because the Lord said that the harvest or his coming would be nigh with summer being at the door so we have covered multiple summer doors the helical rising of Sirius the trajectory of Venus the dog days of summer but there is another summer door and that summer door takes place today so today is actually the day that the that the days in um, on the calendar are becoming shorter so that is a clear transition between the uh the, like the long and hot summer days and the days uh, becoming shorter so we're actually time-wise going to transition to the second half of the year toward the winter time frame so in the images you can see uh, and that's going to be covered in this portion the cutting of trees sometimes results in raisin being harvested for different purposes and that is for instance the case with uh, frankincense but also with the balm of Gilead and that is going to be the main focus of this uh, article today and then of course we have the maidens dancing in the vineyard the an ancient depiction of the balm of Gilead which was so valuable that there were actually guards uh, watching uh, watching these uh, trees because the worth of that balm was twice uh, that of gold and I was also thinking but I couldn't find um, reference to that in the scriptures that when the Lord speaks of the land of milk and honey um, maybe the honey is a little bit easier to um, understand biblically because it's connected to Deborah to bees to wisdom so the land of wisdom but this raisin of the balm of Gilead is brought forth by purposefully cutting the tree not the inner core only the outer layers so the uh, often at times people are equated in the scriptures with trees and I cannot help to see the connection between us and the Lord purposefully uh, allowing the enemy to open us up just like our hearts are circumcised for him to enter and then that precious commodity is being brought forth we're gonna see that in the next portion but remember these images of the precious ointment the balm the maidens dancing the restoration of family it was so precious that guards kept watch over these trees just like the Lord is watching over us and he has his angels watching over us so our 15th was also known as the day of the breaking of the axe when the holy temple existed the cutting of firewood for the altar was completed on this date every year it was celebrated with feasting rejoicing and the ceremonial breaking of axes it could prophetically be interpreted as the preparation of the sacrificial altar meaning the world for its trial or judgment by fire the tribulation remember that uh, the lord gave me the prophetic words through our brother christopher of uh, the red rocks being ready to roll so the altar the coals on the altar are ready to roll they're going to be cast down shortly as the stones of fiery judgment that is at least my understanding and that the trumpet will sound when the wind chimes sing so the last trump is is sounded on tuba of before the feast of trumpets and the wind chime singing could be that swaying that sudden rush of the holy spirit so prophetically the breaking of the axe ties in with luke 17 and the days of Noah, the days of eating, drinking, marrying, and given, being given in marriage. Because today on the state calendar of Israel is that day renowned for eating, drinking, because it's the harvest, it's summer, and of marrying and giving, being given in marriage. The days of Noah numerically is 120 years, also refers to the 120 days 
between the planting of the first summer grain, the summer wheat, and now the time of harvesting. And at that time, the flood of water came, but now we know that the Lord is going to send fire. So as they were eating, drinking, marrying, and being given in marriage, up to that day that Noah had entered the ark, then the flood came and destroyed them all. It was the same in the days of Lot, and the Lord refers to our days um, prophetically, but also as a type of where society is in their uh, degeneration, in their departing from God, not just as the days of Noah, but also as the days of Lot. Lot, who had been interceded for by Abraham, he was righteous, but he had pitched his tent first near Sodom, and then he... Um, decided to live within that city and the angels did dispatched uh, to Sodom to save him and his family um, they didn't didn't save everyone lot and uh, didn't was not able to bring every family member uh, back, uh, back to safety so in the process of him being literally taken out of the city Physically, like they, he had, they had to be physically removed. Him, his wife, and two daughters. We know that Lot's wife disobeyed God and her husband and the angels, and she did what she was not supposed to do, namely live back. And while she was in the process of being saved, she knew the Lord. She had known Abraham, so she was f completely familiar with the biblical account. She purposefully disobeyed and paid the price. So that is the warning that Jesus has given us to remember Lot's wife. Tilbaav was also the day that marked the end of the year for planting, the end of sorrows, and a, formed a picture of the marriage of the Lamb. You can read about that in the article linked over here, but it also had to do with the overcoming power over the enemy. We have seen that in the account of David, when he was strengthened by the priests in Nob, he was given Goliath's sword, he was strengthened by being eligible, able to eat the showbread. And from that moment onward, his uh, fate turned in a sense that while he was on the run from Saul, until that time, he started overcoming and then prevailing against Saul. So, this is the new element I found this morning with regard to the wood offering. So, the Mishnah, the uh, oral accounts of the rabbis, lists the number of days set aside for the different groups to bring wood for the altar to the temple as a donation. And... While wow, that was actually closed on the 9th of Av, it was later extended for a particular reason. We're going to read that later. But the group of people is so interesting because anyone who was able to bring this uh, lowly offering, it had nothing to do with your uh, income, with your status, with your um, with, the, with the ability to bring forth something which would cost a lot of money. Anyone could bring forth wood to the altar. The priests and the Levites mentioned here don't seem to be the high-ranking and wealthy Sadducees as they wouldn't associate with the unwashed masses. Tubal is therefore the day for even the lowliest minimum wage earner to bring something to the temple. In the rabbinical commentaries, we read that it is a, spe a specific happy and blessed day designated for the family of the priests and the Levites, comforts, serfs, bastards, and freed slaves. And remember that when we first came with our offering to the Lord, we were, we were equally lowly and were not able to offer the Lord anything except for our repentance and our acceptance of his gift. And that's where our uh, serfdom, being slaves to the world, to sin, to death, was exchanged to being bond slaves of the Lord.
So to those overcoming brides who walk in faith, in love, and obedience, to them the door is once again extended because the original day set aside for this offering was the ninth of Av. But with the great number of exiles returning, they pushed it forward one week until the 15th. So we see a final opening, an extension of grace uh, in the uh, rabbinical uh, temple tradition to the uh, 15th of Av. And aside from our own like lowly and meek offering when we first entered the Lord's temple, I believe there is another connection because in the Bible it is recorded that we are that living sacrifice. So just like Isaac was put on the altar, the Lord is asking us to to put everything we hold on equal footing with him and especially that which we esteem above and that can be just about anything pertaining to idolatry so anything and anyone we hold in higher esteem as we do him to put that on the altar to remove that out of our lives so our lives become that living sacrifice unto the lord and then that sweet aroma is being brought forth. And in the account of uh, Josephus, the uh, ancient historian, there's another um, occurrence of the overcoming uh, by the Jews of the rulers of Rome pertaining to this day. You can read that over here. And in the ancient sources, it was known that from the... Uh, 15th of Av onwards, the days would begin to shorten, resonating with the doors of summer closing. The verses in scripture pertaining to the Lord's coming, him being nigh at the door, um, and summer being nigh, being at the door, that can actually be seen in the day length, which is going to transition from August 11th to August 12th. Because the day length of August 11, 13 hours, 25 minutes and 40 seconds, is going to be a little bit lower today, 13, 24, 02, and then shorter uh, each day following. So just like the sun is transitioning from Cancer into Leo, 11, 12, the moon is reaching her fullness we see that the day length is actually going to shorten from today onwards. So the midsummer timing, I believe, is important because of the Lord saying that he is the door, he is at the door, and summer would be not even at the doors, plural. The midsummer timing is also important and interesting because the sap of the balm of Gilead was collected midsummer. The groves where this balm was harvested were found first at the area of Qumran and later under Solomon. They were also planted at Jericho. Jericho is known at the moon, as the moon city and of course tonight that moon is full and unveiled. The Dead Sea area uh, at Qumran with the salty grounds that is where the prophetic type of the wilderness bride of the Essenes once lived the balm of Gilead itself is also known as the Judean balsam described in the Bible as the gift that the Queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon second Chronicles 9 9 and it was a highly valued trade commodity in the time of the patriarchs even about 1815 to 5050 BC at the same time, when Joseph was sold by his brothers to a caravan of Ishmaelites carrying balm and other spices, the scriptures record, to Egypt, Genesis 37, 25. So it is not specified that this particular balm was sold, but it is plausible that this balm was included too. It was one of the several components of the special incense that was used twice a day in the Holy Temple in Jerusalem. The Gilead raisin, a milk, a white milk of bleeding harvested by cutting the tree, was the most expensive agricultural product known to man at the time. 
In antiquity, the trees bringing forth the rays and used for the balm only grew around the salty grounds of the Dead Sea Basin where the Essenes lived. And it achieved fame by its highly reputed aroma, but especially the medicinal properties that um, from that time onwards, it is has been extinct in this area now for many centuries. The raisin of this crop was at a price twice that of gold, the highest price ever paid for any agricultural commodity. So the balm of Gilead, as we covered, is not just for incense for temple use and for medicine, but also for the anointing of kings and priests. So the Lord promised promises the bride, those of the bridal company who walk in the highest calling in faith, love, and obedience, that they will one day be kings and priests in the order of Melchizedek. So that could be a connection as well. The uh, precious and expensive plant was also known as the biblical persimmon, bosom or balsam, balm of Gilead. The Hebrew word for bosom means perfume. Just like the scent of the balm of Gilead was part of its appeal. So the scent, the sweet aroma brought forth by the bride is what was being reenacted in the temple. And that at a certain point in time touches the Lord's nostrils. And we know, I'm just now thinking of that, when um, our sense of smell is able to bring us back, to bring back memories from uh, like instantly, without even thinking about it. And sometimes smell is able to bring back memories that we don't even remember in our conscious mind anymore. But the connection between smell and memory is so strong that there could be like this instant connection. So the Ishmaelites who to whom Jacob's sons sold Joseph were likely carrying the balm of Gilead along with the precious spices as they traded their way through the desert. Later, at the end of Jeremiah 8, we see how God's own longing to heal the pain of his broken and wayward people. He called out for this balm of Gilead as a healing remedy. Because of the brokenness of the daughter of my people, I am brokenhearted. I mourn. Desolation grips me. Is there no balm in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Then why has no healing gone up for the daughter of my people? If only my head were water and my eyes a fountain of tears, then I would weep day and night, day and night, for the slain of the daughter of my people. The fractured relationship between God and his people has broken the Father's heart. Why? Because they don't know me, laments the Lord in Jeremiah 9.3. So that will be the distinguishing factor between those who are called in, uh, considered in the bridal company because they know the Lord and the Lord knows them. Tubaav, the midsummer feast, when the Gilead raisin was harvested, commemorates the restoration and family healing resonating with the sons of the right hand Benjamin in both the accounts of Joseph but also of the Shiloh maidens restoring the Benjamin tribe by dancing in the vineyard and making themselves available to be married. Will the heart of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, even of us, of the bride and the little ones, be healed this Sabbath? So remember when the healing of Joseph began, the healing after the restoration with his brothers, with Benjamin, and then with his father. The Lord will shortly come with healing, maybe even this weekend. Malachi 4.1 For behold, the day cometh that shall burn as an oven, and all the proud, yea, and all that do wickedly shall be stubble, and the day that cometh shall burn them up, saith the Lord of hosts that it shall leave them neither root nor branch. But unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up as calves of the stall.
and ye shall tread down the wicked, for they shall be ashes under the soles of your feet in the day that I shall do this, saith the Lord of hosts. And to end this video, I would like to show you a short video of a precious gem found in the city of uh, Jerusalem, which ties back to the balm of Gilead and the restoration of these trees and the balm being brought forth once more. So I pray you're blessed today and are enjoying, looking forward to the Lord coming at the scenes. Much love. נמצאים בתוך תעלת הניקוז המרכזית של ירושלים בתקופת הבית השני, צפונית לעיר דוד, בצמוד לכותל המערבי, מתחת לקשת רובינסון. במסגרת החפירה מצאנו פה נמצא מאוד מיוחד. מדובר בחותם אבן עשוי, אבן החלמה חצי יקרה, ועליו תיאור של תלונה וענף של עץ עם פירות על הענף. ומה שמפתיע היה שהענף הוא ענף עם פירות שלא מוכר מחותמות אחרים מאותה תקופה. ברגע שמצאנו את החותם עם הענף והפירות, העלינו את ההשערה שזה צמח פרי אפרסמון כפי שמופיע במקרא ובמקורות של תקופת הבית השני והתקופה הביזנטית. באנו לכאן למקום היחיד בארץ שבו מגדלים את צמח אפרסמון כפי שגידלו אותו לפני אלפיים שנה. לזה קוראים גמא, זה חותם מהתקופה הרומית, זה סוג של החלמה, אבן חצי יקרה, היא מאוד קטנה כי זה חותם רומי, אבל היא מאוד מפתיעה ומאוד מעניינת. מדהים. אני רואה כאן ענף של מור. תשמע, זה פשוט מדהים, מישהו לקח ענף של מור וצייר אותו על העבר, זה לא מצוין לאף צמח אחר, שאני מכיר. זה האפרסמון שמוזה מהאפרסמון המקראי, זה האפרסמון ששימש כראשון מסוים למנת קוריס של בית המקדש וכראשון למשחה של המלכים והכהנים. קומיפור הגילדנסיס, משפחת הבוסמים, בתקופת המקרא קראו לו צוריד, כתף, נטף ובוסם, העיוונים קראו לו בלסמון, הרומאים קראו לו אופו בלסמון. השם אפרסמון היה השם היהודי של הצורך מתקופת המשנה, והצמח הזה הפיקו את אחת התרופות החשובות בעולם. והיום אני מאמין שהוא יהיה תרופה חשובה. כרגע יש לי בוסם שאני עושה ממנו, ויש לי שמן יותר שלשמחתי הוא מקור הפרנסה העיקרי שלי, ואנחנו גם מפיקים אותו מוצר שעוזר לכל הקורונה. תעלת הניקוז הראשית של ירושלים נבנתה מתחת לרחוב הראשי. הרחוב הראשי התחיל מבריכת השילוח בעיר דוד, ועלה עד להר הבית, עד לבית המקדש של תקופת בית שני. כל הנראה הטבעת הזו עם אחותם נפלה אל תוך תעלת הניקוז לפני מעל אלפיים שנה. לאורך השנים אני עובד באפילה, זאת אומרת, יש הסכמה מקריאותי שזה הצמח, אבל יש מעט תיעוד גרפי שלו, ומה שאתה הבאת לי עכשיו זה ממש דרישת שלום ההיסטוריה. הרגשתי שמישהו רשם על פתק את הציור של הפרי של האפרסבון שלי ושלף אותו. city of David, where it all began.